ships still go down. And when they do, there are ways to evacuate, but there is no dependable way to rescue large numbers of people at sea. A mass rescue situation means that rescue services, if at all available, will be overwhelmed, and other ships just don't have the means to help. Transfer from lifeboats or rafts to any means of rescue is time-consuming and exhausting even under the most benign conditions. There are always other ships nearby though. These ships could shelter a lot of people. We want to give these ships the means to help. If all ships were to carry liftable life rafts for use in case of an evacuation, and any ship of opportunity could connect and lift these rafts filled with people to the safety on board, then mass evacuation could actually be turned into successful mass rescue. The first project, led by the non-profit Swedish Sea Rescue Society, tries to show, through practical tests, that this method for mass rescue is feasible. In this unique test, conducted in March 2012, the goal was to connect and lift a third nine-person life raft to the Ropax Ferry Stemming Atlantica. The raft, which was kindly provided by Viking Lifesaving Equipment, is the largest davit launch and thereby liftable raft currently in production. The recovery operation starts with the ferry circling the raft, or the rafts, in order to calm the sea. This maneuver has proven to be remarkably efficient. A small rescue boat, called a Close Range Rescue Craft, or a CRRC, is used for connecting the crane wire to the life raft. The minimal size of the rescue boat makes launching and recovering, as well as connecting the raft, very much easier and safer than with larger rescue boats. In earlier tests, the small rescue boat has proven undramatic to launch, use and recover in winds in excess of 20 meters per second and in significant wave heights of more than 3 meters. It has also proven to be much easier to train crews in using the more intuitive and forgiving small rescue boat than larger standard boats. Launch and recovery of the CRRC is done by means of a light and flexible drive-through cradle specially developed in the first project. In this test, recovering a 39-person life raft, the time from the launch order for the rescue boat to the raft landing on deck was just over seven minutes. We estimate that recovering additional rafts without having to relaunch the rescue boat would have taken roughly half the time. At seven minutes per raft, that would mean a recovery rate of more than 300 persons per hour, and at the estimated four minutes per raft, nearly 600. These figures should be compared with the now abandoned IMO ambition to require a 10 person per hour recovery rate. Our tests conducted under realistic circumstances show that mass rescue would be feasible if new regulation would demand more than just the ability to evacuate ships in an orderly manner. And if these new requirements were to be coupled with phasing out of older inadequate systems, improved safety might even come with no extra cost.